Hi guys, this is SDJRSMF88 speaking and welcome to another edition of Model Railway Workbench. As you can see, we got uh, quite a lot on the workbench today to get through. So without further ado, let's get started. So one of the main things I've been really working on since the previous update is of course the ROD Baldwin 060 tank and as you can see it's really coming along well and I'm chuffed to bits with how it has turned out so far. Uh, since the previous update I've got round to adding a number of the finer details such as the lamp irons to the front and the rear of the loco you could just probably just about see them apologies for the poor lighting it really doesn't show well on a black locomotive uh, so i've added those i've also added some chain link couplings to the front and rear buffer beams you could just see them there i've also added the couplings which i've done today now these were very difficult to fit as you can see i've had to super glue uh, uh one to the front and i've managed to sort of uh, file down a pocket and managed to slot a pocket in on the rear. Now there is good reason for this. I originally was going to try to find a nice, easy, uh, neat way of mounting these couplings, but because it's an American HO loco, uh, the coupling mounts are very, very different to anything uh, on the UK and European market. So the original couplings are pretty much level with the buffer beam where all the details to, and it would have meant the NEM would have been far too high, and it, you know it just wouldn't couple. So in the end, I resorted to using a pocket to pop on the front, but I found that made it too low. So it was then scraping along the track and also not coupling to the rolling stock. So in the end, I had to resort to just super gluing it on there. And I'm going to tidy it up uh, at some point because uh, there is a little tiny bit of frosting on there. But the coupling is nice and solid on there. Now, as for the pocket on the rear, the pocket does have a bit of a swivel to it, which is very, very good if that's the word you could use. Uh, because as you can see there is quite a distance between the rear drive wheel and the course where the couplings to which means it does swing out a bit on curves of course this is very much like the prototype but obviously being a model it needs these couplings to couple to the rolling stock so this little tiny bit of pivot in that coupling really does help so other things I've done is that I've also added this pipework on here and if I just lift up the cab you'll see the pipework comes off with the front of the cab now this is probably one of the only pieces of pipe i will be adding to the model if you see pictures of this locomotive on online or in books uh, that does show it does show there is a bit more pipe work to this uh, locomotive than what i've actually depicted here but the reason why i haven't added it is because i don't know where the pipe work went to uh, i would rather leave the model without the pipe work than have just random pipe work just placed all over the model and cluttering it up and then having it you know basically going to places where it wouldn't have gone to on the engine uh, so i've decided to just leave it like this for now you never know it might be a future project that i might add it back onto the model at some point but this pipe in particular is very very noticeable in the pictures and it was one well, of the only pipes i could figure out where it was going to uh, and as you can see it comes out from the front of the cab goes over the top of the boiler and then back in on the other side and there were three pictures where you could actually see this uh, first one was from the rear looking that way at the engine one directly from the side and you can see the pipe just going over the top of the boiler and then one sort of looking at the other side of the loco that way along and you can see the pipe going back into the cab on the other side so i managed to figure out where that pipe was going to of course there is still some pipe detail left on the original boiler which is very similar to some of the other pipes that are on there so really it does make sense to sort of uh, just have that one on there for now but anyway as you can see i've mounted it quite cleverly to the front of the cab uh, that means I didn't have to glue it to the top and of course ruin the paint work which we'll come on to in a moment but it also means I can have access if I just move this out of the way to the inside of the cab where I have of course mounted the sugar cube speaker now since the previous update I've shortened the cables by about an inch to this speaker and the speaker has also been mounted and it really does fit in there quite well and when the cab is on it's hardly noticeable uh, especially when I finally get around to adding the crew, which is another reason why I've gone for this sort of removable cab option. I've got a figure from Model U of me and my grandfather when we had ourselves uh, laser scanned. And basically, we're, I'm going to basically have my grandfather as a driver and me as a fireman. I've painted up my grandfather's figure already. I've just got to paint myself up. <laughs> and uh, once that's been done, of course, we will then be added to the footplate. 
There's a few other things that need doing. Uh, one most no most noticeable thing I should say, and you, you can't really see because of the lighting on this camera at the moment, uh, but I plan to add real coal to the bunker. And then of course I plan to weather the model up at a later date once I get around to weathering the rest of the rolling stock. But apart from that, I'm very, very pleased with how the model has turned out. And yeah, it's, it's just turned out better than I could ever have imagined. So without further ado, I'm going to round off this little clip with, of course, a short clip of this locomotive undergoing a test run in its wonderful new ROD livery. So as briefly touched upon while looking at the ROD Baldwin, it's not just uh, locomotives and items of rolling stock on the workbench, but also details and figures too. And this is the latest delivery from WD Models. Now, WD Models is basically the supplier uh, of parts for many of my World War I projects, such as, of course, Amiens 1918. And I always get asked where I get the figures from, and things like the artillery shells and other little details like that and it is of course WD Models and WD Models is ran by a chap called Barry and he always leaves a lovely little personal uh, note in each one of my parcels when I order them from him. I haven't ordered anything uh, recently until this uh, so he knows I'm up to something as you can see by saying um, you know keep us in the loop as what's to go what's going on with these items as I've ordered quite a few random little items here which we'll take a look at but I've just covered up his address but as you can see we have his email there and his website. So do go checking him out if you're after um, anything World War One related for your layouts and other dioramas and other things. Because I know a couple of you guys have also started building World War One layouts and have asked where I get my parts from. So do go check him out. He's a great chap and I can't thank him enough. So anyway, let's take a look at what we got. First of all, we got these artillery shells and we also have these ammo crates now these are going to be for a new layout now scale model scenery recently released a micro layout board which fits inside a wrapping paper box and basically i was in discussions with them about creating this baseboard and i can't thank the team there enough and basically they created uh, that baseboard and uh, it's now on sale on their website it's also available um, with the box as well and basically i've purchased one and the plan is to create a new little world war one micro layout which i could take around uh, to shows and it'll be basically very very quick and easy just to set up a bit like winter's end but of course to a world war one theme and uh, hopefully reveal more details on this layout at some point in the not too distant future but anyway i've started basically gathering parts for this project and as you can see we've got some uh, ammo crates here and some artillery shells which will form part of the details for that we also have a first lot of figures here which is these ones here which are British infantry late and they're basically uh, like casually walking along with their rifles and they will hopefully once painted and assembled will be uh, on part of that layer as well we also have this now this is a Dennis three ton lorry the early version as you can see and this is a kit um, which Barry produces and it's got a number of etched parts in there as well as the res resin parts and you can see you can tell the early version of the three ton lorry by the curved sort of canvas and this will also form uh, one of the little features on this new micro layout of course like my other vehicles on Amiel's 1918 it will be removable and that means I can use it as a load on the back of my ROD trains as well which would be quite nice so I look forward to getting around to assembling that one I also have an Austin armoured car which I got back uh, last year and I've still been meaning to get around to assemble uh, so thanks very much Barry for that one but I will hopefully get around to sorting that one out at some point as well 
anyway, we have these figures here. Now, these figures are for a slightly different project. Uh, first of all, we have these light railway crew. And these, of course, will be on the footplate of some of my WDLR locomotives, which I use on Amions. Or they might be used on my ROD locomotives alongside the 3D prints of me and my grandfather. And I've also got a 3D print of my dad as well. So that's where these are hopefully destined for, is on the footplate of one of the locomotives. We then have these two very well filled packs of figures and these are British passengers for the old Bill bus. Now these figures will mostly be recognised as the figures used in the back of my WDLR troop train on Amiens 1918. And basically they're a mixture of sitting figures and they sit in the back of the uh, the E type wagons or D type uh, D type open wagons very very neatly and Barry was very very pleased when I sent him a picture of what I'd done with them and in fact I think he changed part of the description on his website uh, to say that they are suitable for that wagon as well um, so inspired by that I've got two more packets of these figures now there are a few more than I um, originally remember in the packs uh, of course they do fill a whole D wagon um, but these figures are destined for slightly something slightly different. Uh, I might use some, of course, in another wagon like that, but these will be used on the ROD fleet. And I recently purchased a number of wagons of rolling stock, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment, um, to go with the ROD locomotives. And I purchased a couple of wagons which have a very interesting feature, which we will take a closer look at now. So over the past couple of months, I've been building up a collection of suitable rolling stock to use with the growing ROD fleet. And this is one such recent arrival. This is a Fleischmann boxcar. And when it arrived, there was an interesting feature that I didn't know it had that gave me an idea for another little project. So as you can see, it's this lovely little boxcar. We've got, I believe it's a brake compartment on the end there. Um, I've replaced the couplings for UK style tension locks as it did have Fleischmann close couplings um, but they're on NEM pockets so they simply just pull out and I replaced them with the um, UK NEM couplings which I have plenty of. But the little feature I spotted is this. If I just push here you can see the door opens and closes. Now this is something you don't really get on the UK market so I was really impressed when I saw this and of course it gave me an idea so if I turn the wagon around you can see I've temporarily mounted a couple of those figures from the old Bill bus uh, figure pack from WD models and you can see they fit in there really really nicely. So the idea uh, for this came about while watching a number of videos on YouTube of supply trains uh, during the First World War and a number of you guys have been asking me when am I going to get around to building a troop train for these ROD locomotives and originally I was going to find a collection or a suitable collection of European style coaches and also British coaches that were, were sent over to the front during the First World War and have them uh, running behind the ROD locomotives but it became apparent quite quickly that uh, not all of these uh, troop trains were actually made up of passenger stock, but mostly uh, freight stock like these box fans here. So when I saw that the doors opened on it, I instantly thought that would be a great idea to have the doors open and have the sort of the figure sitting on the um, sort of the door frame, uh, much like in the footage. There was a great uh, clip in one of these videos of a really long uh, train. It might have been a German train, admittedly, so it was a German train headed to the front. But all the soldiers were sitting in the sort of the doorways, uh, waving um, with cigarettes in their hands and uh, flags. And yeah, it was just a really, really interesting scene. Of course, all this was sort of done on for morale. But then they also had clips of British trains as well. And I noticed in my um, ROD book, which I've mentioned as well uh, in previous videos, uh, I think it's uh, Trains to the Western Front or Behind the Western Front, Lines Behind the Western Front, that's what it is. Uh, there was also a number of pictures of British and French trains uh, with these, um, with, with the troops leaning out and, of course, waving to the camera, which I thought was really, really nice. And there was also a lovely clip of a British troop train uh, doing the same thing. And there's one shot, I think there's a flat car, and it has about 30... Um, soldiers just sitting on this flat car uh, as it's being pulled along and behind it was a, a number of artillery wagons so yeah it's a nice little thing to capture and I'm really really pleased that they fit in there quite nicely so anyway apart from adding these figures of course these wagons need to be 
made to look a bit more um, used or how they would have looked on the Western Front. So of course that means weathering. So one of the things I've been trying to find over the past couple of months as well is Humbrol weathering powders, which I use a lot of. I haven't used them um, in a while, uh, but trying to find them in model shops, you know, and online, it's been really really hard and turns out it's because there has been a supply issue at Humbrol and I discussed this with Simon Kohler and a number of the team down at Hornby uh, during the open weekend and they basically mentioned they swapped factories and they were having real trouble sort of getting the production back up to speed again but anyway on a recent visit down to the West Somerset Railway I popped into the lovely little station shop at Bishop's Lydiard and anyway while well, perusing the many items of uh, models and uh, rolling stock they had there I had a look at the paints uh, just by chance and sure enough on the shelf was one pot of weathering powder and it happened to be the black weathering powder which is one of the hardest ones to find and I couldn't believe my luck when I saw it so I'd like to say a massive thank you to the team down there and I'll just give them a little shout out so if you're visiting the West Somerset Railway um, do pop into the station shop at Bishop's City Yard. Uh, some really great little products in there, uh, models, books and DVDs and other things. Uh, so do go in there and do tell them that I said hi because <laughs> I can't thank them enough for finding this little pot of weathering powder. So anyway, that's one of the other things I'm going to get onto is weathering up all these vans and of course adding these figures. So something else to look forward to. So I guess that's all for this update. Uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to bring you more progress on these projects in the not too distant future. And of course, a bit of news on those new World War One layouts that I touched upon in this video as well. Uh, one of which is very, very exciting. It's the one I've not really mentioned in this video, but I've got a really exciting plan uh, for a certain type of scene, uh, which is of course very, very important for all the railways and of course all the supply chains to the Western Front. And it's something I hope to depict with uh, another uh, exhibition layout. And it's something I've been putting off for a couple of months on getting started. The boards have been um, built for quite a while now, but it's something I've uh, been sort of researching and gathering parts for, but it's something I, I'm hoping to start very, very soon. So again, I'll keep you guys posted on that. But anyway, I guess that's all for this update, and this has been SDJR SNF88 speaking, and thanks for watching.